Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you out. I was expecting light rain this morning, but it didn't seem to happen unless it happened nearer the mountains. Um, it did look a little rough up on Mount Lemon this morning. As I looked at our gospel today, at this beginning of Advent in lectionary series C, which is the series we are in now that we are in a brand new church year, I thought there are only about 15 topics I could go to in this gospel to have a sermon. I mean, we can sit right down now and I can list for you all of those possible topics for a sermon in this gospel. But the one that struck me most solidly has as much to do with the other lessons as it has to do with this gospel. And that is the issue of God's justice in the world. The fact that you and I are baptized to become the saints of Christ in a broken world and we are to be the bringers of God's justice in the world. Now that is not the world's justice. I'm not sure there is much justice in the world. Um, we certainly often appear to have lost the heart of the law and try to live by the letter of the law which is often harsher than it needs to be and more difficult than it ought to be. But God's justice has to do with how we care about God's creation and about God's people. I was sitting on the bed this morning getting packed up and ready to leave after church and there happened to be on PBS on Channel 6 an article about water. And, and the fact that water in the Southwest is going to become an issue of justice for all people. Because it is not going to be many more years, perhaps 20 to 25, before there is an inadequate supply of water to handle the number of people here, raise the crops that are being grown here that support the economy of our nation, and to provide for the native population the water that is their right and just due for reparations, I guess, from the uh, Europeans as they came into this area of the world. That water is going to disappear. In fact, they, they said this morning that they have already drilled a well, a, a water line under Hoover Dam and under Lake Mead to go back and come up underneath so that they can draw Lake Mead down to zero. Justice for water. And the Native Americans don't even have enough. Yeah, and, uh, right, they don't for their crops and stuff. You know, we, I was up in Michigan this summer. I, many of you don't ever get to Michigan. You're lucky. Um, <laughs> Michigan's kind of the swampland of the United States in a lot of ways, it, second only to Minnesota. Um, <laughs> and Wisconsin comes in a close third. Um, just happens to be a lot of water up there. And right now the Great Lakes are at the highest level they've been at since the early 1950s, when they had to build jetties along the lakeshore roads to hold them in place to hold the roads in place. The water is up that high. So what do you suppose is coming next? We're going to be looking to put a pipeline in from where? From the Great Lakes. And Canada. To, and Canada to bring water in here. After all, they want us to have their sludgy oil. We can take their water too, I suspect. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, issues of justice for all people. And it's not just here. If we look at all the populations of the world, the historic populations in Syria and Iraq and Iran, they disappeared for one reason, no water. Not enough water to support the population. And so those beautiful historic stone built buildings we see that are part of the history of the Muslim people and even on before the Muslim people, were left in place because the people had to flee and go where there was water. That's going to become one of the great challenges of the church. How do we speak for water justice in the world? We're already speaking for hunger justice. 
for enough food to eat, for a balance in the way in which the whole world uses the single economy of the world to feed. And there are too many people, as we know from Holly's talks with us with crop, and all over the world we see it constantly, there's just doesn't seem to be enough food. We've even noticed recently going to the grocery store that there aren't the number of things there used to be on the shelves in the grocery stores. I wonder if that's going to be something we watch unfold very slowly, even in the United States. Because the world population has grown to a point where supporting that population has become an issue of justice. I don't know how we talk with our Catholic brothers and sisters about birth control. Uh, when they don't, you know, when Rome says no birth control, you know, my, my brother and sister-in-law are Catholic, and they said, are you kidding? The Catholic Church doesn't understand. Um, and it's true. In the world, we don't. In Central and South America, to talk about boundless growth of population is not appropriate for God's creation. Or in China, or in India, or in Europe, or, or in the United States, any place. Today, we are in a circumstance where we have to think about how, as Christians, we bear justice for all these things into the lives of people. You know, there's a reason why we have uh, an Advent tree that not only includes the purchase of gift cards that are distributed inside and outside of the congregation, but also the purchase of animals to be distributed. One year we gave 700 chickens from the congregation. And that was an extraordinary gift. Um, we have bought, this was no personal comment on my relationship with my younger brother. I'm, that's a little disclaimer. We bought them a pig one year. Um, <laughs> and said, this is your Christmas gift from us. We purchased a pig that will be given to a family who has great need someplace in the world. Um, and our niece, who is a Missouri Sunday Lutheran, gave us the gift, I, what was it, was it goats, I think, yeah. one year. She sent us goats. And I, I'd love, do you, do you have goats yet at your house, Aaron? Not yet. They go well with chickens. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have goats? Yeah. So we know when, if you want goats, talk to Daniel. He knows how to work with them. Um, I wouldn't object if you sent me a pair of goats to my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they have much better use in other places. They produce milk and cheese, um, and they bear young, and their, the herds ex expand and become a resource for entire communities. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? When we talk about the advent of Jesus Christ, we're really talking about the advent of God's justice for all of creation. We get to participate in that as God's children. We get to participate in seeking out and reaching out to peoples all over the world to say, God loves you. This resource of this planet is not just intended for we who have, but it's intended for all people. And we want to be people who share that in places where the resources are so limited. But the greater gift that's coming in Advent is the gift of salvation. It is the beginning of the journey of Jesus Christ to bring God's ultimate gift to you and me. We were talking about the children's play today and, and we were talking about the end of the story and I said, no, it's, I said, it's the end of the greatest story and Melody said, no, it's the beginning of the greatest story. Uh, it, and that's true, it is. Christmas is the beginning of the greatest story the world has ever heard or that we have ever been given. And this is the time of preparation for that. It is the time of seeing hope because once again we come to understand that God has sent Jesus Christ for each one of us. Not just for the people who have, not just for the church, but for everyone, no matter who they are. For Muslims and Jews and Hindus and Buddhists and Shintos, all of people all over the world, Jesus Christ has come to redeem all of God's creation and all of God's people. 
And it doesn't matter how we identify ourselves, where we work, what's our personal economy, whether we're young, old, or lying. Um, <laughs> boy, you're really slow this morning. Um, uh, no, we, this is God's coming gift for us all that we're going to celebrate again together. And we, we are so excited. Our children's choir is really getting geared up to share a lot of music this holiday season. They're going to sing an Advent and sing for the Christmas program and sing for the Christmas Eve worship service. Um, it's going to be great, great fun and great, great rejoicing. Um, and we'll name them all off so after we're done with their singing, you can corner the ones that weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, that, where's Noelle? <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Noelle's our dancy prancy in choir. Um, so please, in this season of Advent, take time to open all of those doors on that Advent calendar. I have, where did they go? They're on the table. Well, they're where? On the table. They're back on the table. Pick one up if you didn't. Take it home, take time each morning or each evening, light a candle, and reflect on what that passage says about God's justice for a hungry world. And that our world is not just hungry to be fed with food, it's hungry to be fed with God's truth and God's kind of justice for everyone. If we had that, there'd be no war anymore. It would be the perfect place to live. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.